Hello and thank you for joining me today here on Christ Connection Ministries International. I am Frank Blaylock, your host. We are doing one of our pulpit series today. And the scripture I take is in Psalms 55 and verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. When I'm in the midst of trial, when I'm in the midst of test, even temptation, uh, when I have decisions to make, I want to know what does the Word of God say about it. Because I know that the Word of God is quick, meaning it is alive, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. So I'm not talking about some archaic document that has been buried under the dust of centuries of time. I'm talking about a living, breathing Word of God. And when you study the Scriptures and when you look at the Hebrew language and understand that the Hebrew alphabet, each letter has a meaning. It has a number attached to it. It makes it unique, really, from... I think every other language in the world. If I were to say to you the letter Aleph, which is a Hebrew letter, it has great connotation. It has a number attached to it. If I say to you the English alphabet A, you have no idea, do you, what A means. What does A mean? What number is attached to A? And when you look at the Hebrew, there are layers and layers and layers of definition. Meaning, when you go into the Word of God, there are layers of information. There is a constant supply of new revelation that is coming forth out of the Word of God. Many times those rhema words, those words that are for you personally, you're sitting and you're reading the Word of God, and something strikes you like that, and you said, I needed that today. That was just exactly what I needed today. And here's what the Word is saying to us today. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be removed. That is Psalms 55 and 22. I find that a tremendous encouragement to me that I don't have to carry this weight on my shoulder. I can toss it off. I can cast it away, and the Lord will himself sustain me. And there's another scripture in Psalms 56 and 9 that gives me great comfort. It means God is watching over my life. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? That just tells me that God is watching every moment of my life. If you're in the middle of a test right now, God is watching. If you're weeping right now, He's gathering up those tears. Because God is very intimately connected to us, to you as a believer. Even if you don't believe in Him, He's still connected to you as He, by the Holy Spirit, is seeking to draw you to Himself. There's a very a uh, wonderful story I read many, many years ago. And I want to share that with you this morning because I think it kind of uh, wraps up what our life with Christ is all about. It's called the tandem bike ride with God. Of course, a tandem bike is a two-seater bicycle uh, where there's one on the front pedaling and one on the back pedaling. And of course, the one on the front does all the steering and makes all the decisions, right? And so, we don't know who the author it is, who the author is, but the story has been around a long time. And it goes like this. I used to think of God as my observer, my judge, keeping tracks of all the things I did wrong. So, to know from that whether I merited heaven or hell when I died, God was out there kind of like the president. I recognized his picture when I saw it, but I really didn't know him. But later on, when I met Jesus, 
It seemed as though life was rather like a bike ride, but it was a tandem bike, and I noticed that Jesus was in the back helping me pedal. I didn't know just when it was suggested that we change seats, but life has never been the same since I took the back seat to Jesus, my Lord. Since then, my life has become far more exciting. When I had control, I thought I knew the way. It was rather boring, but it was predictable, right? You understand that. It was the shortest distance between two points. If I had somewhere to go, what's the quickest way to get there? But when he took the lead, he had delightful long cuts, not shortcuts, long cuts up mountains and through rocky places at breakneck speeds. And it was all I could do to hang on. Even though it often looked like madness, he said, Hey, pedal. <laughs> uh, I was worried and anxious and asked, Where are you taking me? He laughed and didn't answer. And I started to learn to trust him. I forgot my boring life and entered into the adventure with Christ. And when I'd say, I'm scared, he'd lean back, touch my hand, and just keep going. He took me to people with gifts that I needed. I needed gifts of healing, acceptance, and joy, and I found these from people we visited. But then they said so they gave me their gifts to take on my journey, our journey, Jesus and I, my Lord's and mine, and we were off again. He would say, give the gifts away. Their extra baggage, too much weight. So I did to people we met along the way. And I found in giving, I received, and still my burden was light. I did not trust him at first to be in control of my life. I thought he'd wreck it. But he knows bike secrets, knows how to make it bend to take sharp corners, jump to clear high rocks, fly to shorten scary passages. And I'm learning to shut up and pedal in the strangest places. And I'm beginning to enjoy the view and the cool breeze on my face with my delightful constant friend, Jesus. And when I'm sure I just can't do it anymore, he just smiles and says, pedal. You know, that's the exciting thing about our relationship with God. Christ is our constant encourager. He is always there to encourage us to push a little further, to just pedal. It's kind of like it says, let me do the driving here. You just pedal. And of course, sometimes you just hang on because things are going so fast. I go back then to our subject, I will call upon God, because in life you have daily reasons to call upon God, don't you? Psalms 57 and 7, the writer said, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Psalm 67, verse 5 through 6, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. And it says something very important, that when you're praising God, then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. So if things are going tough, if things are barren, and we're living in an economic situation now, here in 2022, where uh, many people are afraid because they don't know if their resources are going uh, to survive what is happening through uh, inflation and even possible recession. But he says, if you praise me, then the earth will hear that and the earth will yield her increase to you. So through these tough times, through all tough times, 
Continue to praise God, for God will cause the earth to produce for you everything that you need. Romans 14 and 17 puts things in perspective. And he says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's not that you don't need meat and drink in these things. He said, But the essence of life are these things. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. It is righteousness and peace. God will give us all these other things, even in Romans 15 and 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So God wants us to understand the valuable things in life. He's already promised us, has he not? That if we would seek the first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all this other stuff would be added to us. So he said, I got that covered, friend. I want you to focus on me. I want you to enjoy peace and righteousness. I want you to enjoy your time with me. I want you to hang on to the back seat of that two-seater bicycle and let's go some places and enjoy some life together, God would say. Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Galatians 3 and 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham was a very powerful man with God. Had an extraordinary relationship with God. Fact is, when God was going to do something, even in the earth, such as destroy cities. He came down and had a conversation with Abraham about it to see if something could be worked out where the city could be spared. You're very important to God and God will talk to you even about governmental things. And some will not want to hear it, but God will speak to you about political things because God is a God of, of government. He is a God of laws and statutes because those are the things that help society to live in harmony. In Psalm 60 and 12, when you're in the middle of a test, remember this. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. The Lord says, I'll take care of your enemies. You're going to do okay in this. You're going to get through this tough time. You're going to make it through uh, the struggle. Because you shall do valiantly through me. Let us talk about the relationship. Uh, we see that in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 22. Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Did not God do that with the nation of Israel? He sure did. On top of Mount Sinai, they saw the lightning. They heard the thunder. They felt the ground move under their feet. Because God came down and it shook the earth. Did more than that, it shook them until they were so afraid. He said in Exodus 23, verse 20 through 22, in reference to them leaving Egypt, he said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee unto the place I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. What is God really saying? He's saying, if you will make me Lord and God, then your enemies are my enemies and you need not worry about it. I will fight the battle. Did he not say in one place, I think it was to Jehoshaphat, the battle's not yours, but it's God's. Trust me in the middle of your battle, the Lord will say. Let us look at the blessing that we have when we're calling out to God. Exodus 23, verse 25 through 26. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of them. There shall nothing cast 
they are young, nor be barren in the land. Number the number of thy days I will fulfill. Do you know that there are forces that want to cut your days short? But God says, if you will serve me, your number of days will be fulfilled. Do you believe God has a plan for you and it takes so many years to fulfill that plan? Then he's going to make sure you're able to live out your destiny in the earth today. He says, I will show you what I can do through small things. We like to either be humble or pretend to be humble sometimes when we say, I'm just so small. How can God do anything through me? Listen to what he says. He says in Psalms 8 and 5, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have I ordained strength that I might avenge myself of mine enemy, that I might steal the enemy and the avenger. Because even out of the weakest thing, God will bring forth strength. Uh, out of the thing most unlikely, will come your salvation. You perhaps are looking for an avenue of escape. You're looking for a means to save yourself. You're looking for an opportunity to rescue yourself, maybe out of a financial issue. And the Lord is saying to you, the very unlikely thing may be the thing that is your salvation. We see in Exodus 15 and 25 that a tree was cast into bitter waters at Meribah, and the waters were made sweet. We see in Judges 14 and 14 that Samson had gone through on one day, had battled a lion and killed it with his bare hands, and a day or so later he came back by, and the carcass was full of sweet honey. So God is able to bring sweetness out of your deadly struggle. He'll give you the victory, but then he'll bring sweetness out of it so that the battle doesn't destroy you, but you find the sweet thing out of the battle that you have indeed gone through. What attacks you will be conquered by the hand of God that is upon you. And out of that will come a sweet revenge upon your enemy. No greater revenge than the kind of sweet revenge that comes from heaven because he says, Take not vengeance into your hand, because that's mine, says the Lord. I am righteous and just. I will deal with unrighteousness, and I will deal with things that have been perpetrated against my children to their harm. We look at Deuteronomy 13 and thir I mean 32 and 13, where it talks about honey out of the rock. So there's that little bit of honey. I like the scripture that says to eat a little honey uh, because it will enlighten your eyes. We see in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 49 that a small well-placed stone by David brought down the giant Goliath. A well-placed uh, stone in your hand. Maybe it's not a physical stone, but something God gives you God will use that little small thing to bring down the giant that's staring you down today. You see, God's greatest delight and strategy is placing one man against a host of enemies and giving the victory to the one who will fight until the sword cleaves to his hand. We see that in 2 Samuel 23 and 10, where the man of God fought in that field of lentils because the the armies of the Philistines had come right at the harvest time to steal all of his labor. But he stood there with the sword in his hand until his sword literally melted, we could say. Until his hand couldn't even get off of it, it claimed to the sword and he won a great victory. God wants to make you and the Word one. We know the Bible talks about that the Word of God is a sword. Indeed, Make yourself inseparable from the Word, and the victory will always be yours. Very easy in the middle of battle to get distracted. But if you're going to fight for your life, keep your eye on the Word. Keep the Word in your hand. Keep the Word in your heart. That's your salvation, my friend. 
I've seen the word save me and console me so many times I can't even recount them all because the word of God is powerful. It is alive. It is living as we said in the beginning of this message. And then there's something very interesting to me in Joshua 8 and 29. I like to call this possessing galactic power because Joshua said what? He commanded the sun and the moon to stand still for the planetary systems to kind of like screech to a halt, screech to a stop because he needed more daylight to win the battle against his enemies. That's pretty powerful. But that tells me that you and I are not walking in the level of relationship and power that is really ours. Because I don't know of anybody that's done that since Joshua. Maybe nobody since Joshua has needed to do it. But the principle is there that you have power in heaven and earth by the sword in your hand to change your situation. So you see there is more dynamo in you than you know. Uh, a little meal that was added to the pot in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 40 when the prophets and the servants and the sons of the prophets were eating, uh, they had cast, I think it was, some gourds in there that were poisonous. But the prophet said, bring me some meal, and he cast it into the pot. All the bitterness was gone out of it. There may actually be a medical remedy there. I'm not suggesting you try it, but for that occasion, God said, cast some meal in it. The poison was taken out, and all those hungry prophets were able to eat them. We see a little bit of all in 2 Kings chapter 4, 4 and verse 3 where that the lady at the order of the prophet kept taking a little bit of oil she had in that little bottle and she poured it into these bigger containers and her eyes got really, really big because that little bit of oil just kept pouring and pouring and it wasn't a magic trick and that big pot filled up and then she got another pot and wow, her eyes are still big. That pot filled up. You know what happened when it was over? She paid off all of her debt and she had a retirement plan given to her. The best retirement plan you can get is one that God brings you a financial miracle and you're able to have funds for the rest of your life. And that's what it said happened to this lady. We know that too. On another occasion in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 42 through 44, again the prophets are sitting around hungry. But somebody brings 20 loaves of bread and some ears of corn in the husk. And how many people did he feed? It fed 100 people. Those brave prophets said, Lord, here's this guy brought 20 loaves of bread and we got some ears of corn still in the husk. How in the world is that going to feed anybody? He said, you just pass it out. You give it to them. And sure enough, all 100 of those people ate and were filled and things were left over. We see in Genesis 26 that uh, 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 Isaac, the land was in famine. And Isaac said, I'm going to do something novel. I'm going to buck the system. I'm going to do what nobody in their right mind would do. I'm going to sow seed into this soil. And he did it. And God gave him a hundredfold harvest. Do you know God wants to give you a hundredfold harvest? In the midst of famine, uh, is Isaac unique and alone, or is Isaac an example? I believe Isaac is an example of what God can do. So do you see then the cooperative nature of your miracle? It is man and God working together. Uh, God rained manna down from heaven, yes, but in this occasion, he had... Isaac so, and then he blessed it. I can almost see God now. Never thought of it like this before. I can just see God breathing on that plot of land and just like the nutrients are coming alive, like the soil has been softened, like moisture is coming to it. And God just kind of kept the sunshine right and everything just perfect as if it were happening in the natural. God created an environment where he was able to produce a hundredfold. You see, 
God taking your little bit, blowing upon it, and it becoming a miracle. A little boy's lunchbox that fed 4,000 at one time, 5,000 at another time. We see in Judges 15 and 16, the jawbone of an ass becoming a weapon of mass destruction in Samson's hand. We see a little lad again in Judges 16 and 26 when Samson has been humiliated. He gave away the secret to his power to Delilah. Be very careful who you cohabitate with. Be very careful who you put your trust in because they may be there to steal the secret of your power with God. Talking really a lot about demonic entities, but people as well. So here Samson has lost his hair. He's lost his power. He's been grinding meal like an oxen and he's been poked fun at. So one day they decide to bring everybody together and they're going to mock Samson. But Samson says to a little lad, show me where the pillars are that support this whole structure. The little lad led him to it and Samson put his hands upon that. I just believe that he said to that lad, you better get out of here. Something's going to happen. He may not have said in that words, but I believe he told the lad, now you run outside of this building, okay? And the lad just kind of knew, wow, this man was about to do something. And all of a sudden, when he prayed, God, avenge me of mine eyes. And he began to push against those pillars. Once again, the muscles of Samson just bulged out. And he pushed, and there was a crack and a break. And the whole building tumbled, killing thousands of people that day. Because God, again, avenged himself because of what they had done to Israel and to Samson because God is a God of justice. But what is God saying about you today? What is, uh, is God wanting to communicate to you? Psalms 91 verses 14 through 16 says, Because he hath set his love upon me, talking about you, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Do you see the love of God? Do you see what God has for you? He says, because you call out to me, I will answer you. Did I not say in the beginning, I will call unto the Lord? I will call unto God, for the Lord shall save me. With long life will I satisfy you and give you my salvation. Quit worrying about dying, friend. Quit worrying about what's going to happen in the next five years. The Lord promised you, if you serve him, a good long life. You see, things are actually better sometimes than what they look like because God is with you. And he is going to use you to solve your own problem, your own dilemma or lack. Sometimes we're looking at outside rescue. We're looking a hero and a cape to come flying in and to save the day. God says, I'm big enough to bring your salvation through you. I'm big enough to give you the solution to the problem and to the dilemma. So may the Lord open our eyes to see. Revelations 3 and 18, he talks about anointing our eyes with salve, eye salve, that we might see. We know in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 17 that the servant of the prophet said, we're surrounded. Look at the chariots. And the Lord said, or he said to his servant, and he said to the Lord, open his eyes that he might see. And then he saw the bigger army. Wow, two armies out there. The bigger one was God's army, and he knew they would be safe and okay. Uh, because God wants to cause us to see into the spirit realm. So to do that, avert your eyes from the system of a world and focus your eyes on the system of the kingdom of God. Your miracle then, let me tell you, your miracle will leave the mark of God on your life. 
Your testimony will come to life out of your difficulty. Your walk will be unlike anything you ever imagined. There'll be so many wonderful moments like that tandem bicycle. You're just hanging on, but it's joyful. You're missing a lot of stuff that the enemy targeted you with because you're with Christ and he spared you a lot. Sometimes we think it's just one problem after a problem, but when God is with you, you're spared way more problems than you have encountered them. Your walk is going to be unlike anything you ever imagined. You didn't ever dream life could take you to the places it has taken you, but God is saying to you today, I am your strength and I am with you. His ear is open to your cry. He says to us this, does he not? That if we call unto him, he would answer us. And David said, I will call unto God, for the Lord will save me. So expect things to happen in your life. Expect a shift to take place and miracles to take place. Expect good things to come into your life. Keep expectancy alive. Let me share this word with you as well. It's a little bit lengthy, but I think I can, I'm just going to read this through. So I think I can read it pretty quick. I hope that you will hear this as an admonition from the Lord to you personally. Because it is a prophetic utterance that he gave me. And I want you to receive it as if you're the one, particularly the one that the Lord is speaking this to. Am I not God? Is anything too hard for me? Can you ask of me anything that I cannot do? Is there any such question so challenging that I cannot provide an answer, saith the Lord? Is there any need so great that I lack sufficient provision to address it? Do you not know that I sit upon the circle of the earth, that I ride upon the wings of the wind, that the clouds are the dust of my feet, that heaven is my throne, and that the earth is my footstool? Do you not know or perceive that all things, all things are under my feet, that all things are under my authority and must obey my voice and my instruction. I speak and water turns to wine. I speak and storms are abated. I speak and demons flee in terror. I still heal the sick and I still raise the dead. All disease, no matter what its name, will bow to my name. For there is no name like the name of Jesus Christ. There is in my name power. In my name is deliverance. In my name is hope and life. In my name is peace and comfort. In my name is strength. What I did in the past, I'm still doing today. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I never fail. I never sleep or slumber. I am never away on vacation or holiday. I am close at hand, even by your side. I watch over you to keep you. I watch over you to shower you with my blessings and with my favor. I give you power of my power. You're not weak, but strong. You're not poor, but rich. You're more than a conqueror. You are a victor. I will smash through you your enemies who would dare to stand against you. No enemy will be able to withstand you when you stand. You would take the spoil of those who sought to spoil you. I will turn the tables on your enemies and you will escape their trap. They will not be able to stand before you because I will put my dread of you upon them. They will flee. They will cease and desist. All actions against you at your very command, you will say, quiet, and they'll have to be quiet. Take the words I put in your mouth and speak those to silence all who will speak against you. 
I am coming to you. Are you prepared? Have you made yourself ready? Are you ready for transformation? Are you ready for a new persona? Are you willing to become a new man and a new woman? Until people begin to ask, Hey, have you joined the prophets like King Saul? Are you ready to become a spear of the Lord? The tip of the spear? To be used in extraordinary ways? To stand out from the crowd? To be a peculiar and prized possession. And to carry my name and in my name to do great exploits. Because the greater one is within you. So why sit ye here pondering your life when the whole new world is out there in front of you for you to explore? Come then to me and I will show you the ways of the Lord. Come and explore my mysteries. I have secrets to whisper to you if you will listen. I have places to take you if you will follow. You will experience the inexplicable. You will experience the ride of your life. You will walk in realms you did not even know existed in the things of the Father. As I change you, I will change the world through you. Are you ready? Will you say yes? Will you say yes right now? Will you yield to me so that I might feel you? You didn't know it, but this is exactly what you've been waiting for. To be a firebrand for me, says the Lord. To be a holy instrument. To live out your destiny that I put within you before your bones even begin to grow and form in your mother's womb. Before that, so that you might live your full and total destiny. That is my will for you, says the Lord your God. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord today.